In this animation, we'll take a look at the concepts of batching and commingling, and establish the difference between these two concepts. Now, first of all, let's talk about how batching and commingling are available. The concept of batching is available in two different places. You can do it straight from the output module in the designer interface using the job presets, or you can do it using automation using the retrieve item task in the workflow module. Commingling, on the other hand, is only available during automation using the retrieve item task. So let's start with batching. Batching, in essence, is the ability to mix and match documents of the same type, which means they were all generated from a single template. Batching uses the sorting and filtering options as well as the separation options from the job and output presets. For example, if you're generating a series of invoices, batching would let you group all of the invoice for a single client together so that you can put them all in a single envelope. If you're doing this using the job options directly from designer, you can only do this for your current uh, record set or your current set, meaning you can only do it for the current invoice run. If you're doing this from workflow using retrieve items, this also gives you the ability to mix and match from different invoice runs. However, the limitation is that they all have to be produced by the same template. Now, what about commingling? Commingling is essentially the ability to batch documents coming from different templates. Meaning, if you have invoices but you're adding on letters or promotional items, you can use the retrieve items to mix and match different document types into a single job. Once you have used the retrieve item to get all your document types, then you can still use the sorting and splitting options from the job presets and the output creation presets to do your output. So let's start by showing you how to do batching from within the output module, which you can access from the designer interface. So batching is done through the job presets, which you can access from the file menu, print presets, job creation settings. Let's create a new job creation preset that will do batching. The options that you need to have are grouping and filtering and sorting. Now, the first thing I'll do in this particular template, because the data file that I have, so the record set has both credit note and invoice information, which we have two different templates for, I need to put a condition to only put credit notes because this is my credit note template. So I'll start by adding a field rule, which checks for a negative invoice amount. The next step is the sorting options. Now, obviously, in order to group the documents together, group the invoices together, we need to have them sorted. So all we need to do here is to start by sorting with the account number. And because it's useful for the client, we'll follow up with a sorting with the invoice amount. And we sort it descending so that the invoice amount, the highest one, will appear first out of convenience for the client. And the last option that we need to put is the actual grouping of the uh, documents. So here, all we need to do is to choose a field for the document set grouping. Whenever this field changes, then a new document set is created. Now, essentially, that's all you need to do to create your batch. So let me just overwrite the batching uh, preset that I had already. And then we'll go in the output options or the output presets and show you how batching can also be useful after that.
Now the sorting and filtering option from the job preset do affect the output creation. So for example, if I were to do cut and stack imposition, the order and the filtering that I established in job preset would affect the order and result of the cut and stack itself. If I'm adding inserter marks, so adding OMRs for uh, folder inserter machines, then the document set is what is going to be used to define each and every envelope content. So we're automatically grouping the invoices into one envelope for the client. And lastly, we have separation options, which I can show you because they're pretty simple. So here, if for example, you wanted to add a slip sheet or to jog the output tray after every uh, document set, so after every client, then you can simply select the document set and this is the one we configured in the job presets. In this case, however, what I'll do is add a slip sheet so that we can see it in the PDF output. Let's save this as a descriptive name, such as PDF with slip sheet. Now let's see the PDF that's output from this. We'll just go into print and then we'll select the output and job presets that we just created. So now we can observe from the PDF that we're starting with a slip sheet because we basically told it to add a slip sheet before each document set. And we can verify that the order account at the top right always matches between the slip sheets. So let's start by showing you how to do batching from within the output module. Now let's take a look at how to do this with retrieve item in the workflow module. The first thing we need to do though is to actually send the new presets as well as our template and data mapper to the workflow module. All we need to do is to go in file and then package file or send to workflow depending on your connect version. Make sure to select the job creation preset and output creation preset we just did. And we click on OK. So now that we're in the automation module and we have our template as well as the uh, job preset and the output preset, we're ready to show you the batching in automation. Here we have two processes that can do batching. The first one is the one that produces the uh, content item. In this example process, we are simply waiting for a Dynamics AX system to send us a batch of invoice that is sent anytime somebody produces one. By the way, if you want more information on Dynamics AX integration, take a look at the demo that we have available on demo.objectsifloon.com. The only task other than Dynamics AX that you're probably not familiar with here is the set properties task. So let's go take a look inside of it. Now set properties, what it does essentially is to simply tag items inside of the connect server with the specific properties that you set here. The way that we're doing the monthly batch here is that we're simply setting the value of the current month as a property. And this is what we're going to use to retrieve all of the invoices only for this particular month, because we're just grabbing that monthly value. One important thing to note is that set properties can be used with uh, different entity levels. So you can tag uh, properties on records or record sets which come from execute data mapping. And you can also tag content sets, content item, jobs and job sets, which are only for print content because that happens after the create print content task as we have here. So now that we have our monthly batch property set correctly, once we have this, we can simply delete the file because the content item is safe in the database and we will retrieve it in the second process. Now the second process is fairly simple. As I said, it runs at 11 p.m. on the last day of the month. 
To reproduce this setup, all you need to do is to remove the as soon as possible check mark, select the week of the month by date to date, and at the end of the grid, the only one that you select or put in blue is 23 p.m. on the last day of the month. So in retrieve items, all we need to do is to get the monthly batch equals the current month. Now, because we're still at 11 p.m. the last day of the month, uh, the month is still equal to all the invoices that we've produced. Of course, we need to set the content item as the type of entity that we retrieve. And of course, this dropdown corresponds to the option when you set the properties so you can retrieve the ones that you created. And our condition just checks for exactly the same property. Now, obviously here you can combine conditions. You can set uh, different types of values such as bigger than, smaller than. You can check for customer IDs, whatever you want, whatever you set as a property, you can do it here and you can mix and match them. Now, of course, create job and create output we've already seen. And because the output preset that I showed you earlier is PDF, I've set it to output and then save it to a folder. Obviously, if you're doing that, you'd probably send it to a printer uh, and use a print output in whatever uh, type your printer supports, AFP, PCL, uh, Postscript, whatever. So let's start by showing you how to do batching from within the output module. So here we have the process that demonstrates co-mingling. As we said earlier, co-mingling gives you the ability to mix and match different document types. So in this process, we have an example of generating two different templates, the invoice and the credit note. Now, assume that what we're receiving from our Dynamics AX system is the whole batch for the month, and it contains data for both invoices, which have a positive invoice amount, and credit notes, which have a negative invoice amount. Of course, you could have this in three different processes, one generating invoices, one generating credit notes, and then the other one doing retrieve items, depending on how your system is set up. So in this process, what we're doing to tag the items is we're only running one batch. So at the beginning of the uh, process, we're setting the uh, job info nine to a random series of characters. And in the set properties, we're just setting the session to that same value. Once we've generated both the invoices and the credit notes, then we're doing retrieve items and just checking for the session. So we're using the content items that we just created right away at the end of the process. And of course, we finish after retrieve items with the same create job and create output, which we send to a folder. But of course, again, we could send to a printer. Before we let you go, here's one small important note about doing batching and commingling. When we mentioned that in the set properties, we're tagging data or print content items, for example, that go in the database, it's important to know that this database gets cleaned up regularly. This is the cleanup service preference, which you can access either from the designer or data mapper module in the window preferences dialog and then cleanup service options or is also available in the Connect Server Preferences icon in the Start menu for the OL Connect application. So the important note here is that by default, the cleanup service will only retain uh, data, content, and job sets for one day, and then those are actually deleted. So in our example of running invoices for the whole month and then waiting for the end of the month to generate them, we would actually only have invoices for one day. But those are very adjustable. All you need to do in the cleanup service window is to set the amount of days, hours, or minutes that you want to retain information and then simply apply the changes. This essentially only affects the automation side of things, so information being kept in the background. If you're only using Connect Designer to print out your job and you're not doing automation, you don't really care about this. And that's it for the animation on batching and commingling.